Hello everyone. In today's video, I'm continuing my Don't Starve series. In the last episode, we talked about, let me see here. Ah, uh, yes. It was WXMD and Wickerbottom the Librarian. I tried something different with the camera, so um, I tried to make the screen darker, so I think you might be able to see the characters a little bit better. I'm just gonna show you all the characters we've done already. As you can see, that's what their pictures look like. Some of them are brighter than others. One of you guys suggested in my Tears of the Kingdom series to um, get something called a capture card, so that's something I'm gonna be trying to work on getting off camera. But until then, this is the best I could do to get the quality slightly better. In this episode, we're gonna be talking about Woody and Wes. All right, for Woody, first off, he has 150 health and hunger. That's kind of like the normal for those things, and sanity. So he's basically kind of a normal character. And he also has an axe that he starts with, which I'll show you all what the axe does later. His perks and quirks are, he has a lovely axe. He can, he's at war with the forest. That's just one of them. He can also turn into a were beaver and were moose and goose. In the original game, it was just the beaver. However, they added more animals to don't stir together. It also says he's thankful for bountiful harvests. Well, that, that doesn't affect his um, gameplay nor does is at war of the trees his birthday is september 12th and his favorite food is honey nuggets now here it, you see these long descriptions for his story but he doesn't actually have a backstory one of them just talks about how the librarian was showing woody how to control his powers a bit and the other one just talks about i'm actually not too sure it doesn't actually give him it doesn't say anything about how he entered the constant i mean for all the player knows he could already have lived in the constant before because in his animated short he's fighting a tree guard which those only exist where the player is in the game currently also known as the constant again but anyways there's basically not really much to talk about i'll talk about more of his gameplay mechanics when we actually jump into the game but now i'm going to talk about wes's story all right wes his perks and quirks are he can't talk, he practices balloonmancy, and he's not a skilled fighter or worker, and has trouble staying alive. Okay, at first he's kind of like a joke character almost, but uh, he's also the super hard challenge character that it's like just like super hard to play as him. He has 75 health, hunger, and sanity, which those are like the lowest possible stats ever. Which this poor character, um, literally everything's against him which I'll explain that in the game. It's gonna be a lot to talk about. He has some balloons in his pocket, which um, you'll get to if that enters the constant with tab, how it has a little pile of balloons. His birthday is April 16th, and his favorite food is fresh fruit crepes. However, he has the disadvantage about having that as his favorite food. Okay, so let me show y'all. Okay, this other character, Warley, I'll do his video later on, but he's the only character that can cook this meal. Meaning, if you want to eat your favorite food in the game to get more stats from it, you have to have this guy cook it for you. And to make things even worse, because it's, because he has such low stats, um, it's not even worth cooking, because um, it won't do anything. Like, normally characters, when they get their favorite food, they actually get benefits from it, but not necessarily Wes. I mean, he'll get some benefits from it, but I mean, it's honestly easier just to cook other kinds of meals. He has a per somewhat longish story, but I'll simplify it. Basically, one day Wes was being a mime on the streets when he got a coin one day because he's a street performer. He then went to go buy a crepe with it. Coming back to the area he was standing, a little girl drops her doll, which falls on him. He then, because he's a nice person, makes a balloon and then floats the um, has the doll float up to the little girl. However, the wind then pushes the doll into the wrong direction. Going in a quick panic, he runs out after it. After going through a bunch of series of trial, running through the entire city, he finally catches up to the doll. However, when he's going down an alleyway to escape some crows that he accidentally angered, instead of some other guy, Wes ends up taking the place of someone else in the constant. The other guy that was going to get caught in the constant is actually someone who Maxwell is very mad with. So then Maxwell did what he thought was right for Wes and put him in an invisible cage. I'm not kidding, this is genuinely true. If you go into single player don't stir and go to the Maxwell's door, go to I think world 4 in the Maxwell's door, you'll find Wes trapped. And then you can defeat the clockworks and save him. 
but that's just how to unlock him in the regular game. This isn't necessarily what the series is about, but I thought I'd just mention it anyways, since it's technically part of his story. Alright, I think now there's nothing else to talk about, so I'm gonna hop into the game. Alright, I loaded into the game. Y'all may not recognize my character. Let me show my character right now. I'm playing as Woody. I'm just using the Voya Coil, I think is what it's called. Cowl, actually. Just a bunch of items I've been collecting off camera. Anyways, now to talk about Woody's abilities. First off, like I mentioned earlier, he has an axe, which the axe talks actually. So it's pretty cool. However, if the axe will go crazy if you put her, because the axe is named Lucy, if you walk around with her inside of your backpack long enough, she'll say things like she's claustrophobic. Also, if you leave her on the ground, she also has say she also say other things like, for example, right now she said, "Why would you throw me away?" And then if you pick her up again, she'll be like, oh, it was awful. So it's just kind of funny how clingy the axe is. Anyways, there's some trees over here. You have less swings than a normal character to chop trees. Like normally this tree would take like 10 hits. Let's see how many it takes now. Five. Yeah, five hits. So basically this thing is like the tree destroying machine. The only problem about Lucy in my opinion, well, when you're playing as Woody and Lucy, is that you can't really dig up the stumps. So it's kind of annoying, because you have to craft a whole new tool just to do that. They already released Woody's skill tree, however it would have been cool if one of the skills on there was that Lucy would be able to dig up all the uh, stumps. Just so that way you don't have to craft an extra shovel if you want to get the extra wood. His other advantages is that he can craft three totems. One for a moose, which when he eats him, when he eats all of these, it turns it into the respective animal. There's one for a moose, goose, and beaver. However, if it's if it's a full moon night in the game, then Woody will transform automatically, which it can make things like getting glomer kind of hard. If y'all don't know who that is, it's this giant, well, sort of giant bug creature that gives the player sanity and glomer goop. I mean, it's somewhat helpful, but you don't need it as Woody if you don't want to. But it is helpful if you're trying to beat Celestial Champion or something like that. Other than that, that's not much. To, there's not a lot to talk about his main character in the game. I mean, he has an axe, he can cut trees faster, and he can transform into different creatures. That's basically it. Now I'm going to go into his skill tree. As you can see, he has a ton of skills, which I'll explain all of them. First off, transformation timers 1, 2, and 3 make it so when Woody's in a wear form, meaning turning into a creature, he'll last longer in that character's form. I'll show y'all what I mean right now, because I can actually turn into all the creatures to show y'all what they do. Curse Embracer ability. This one's kind of cool and probably super essential and necessary. It basically allows you to, if you don't know for a fact, because I haven't shown y'all yet, but whenever you turn into a weird creature, like the moose, goose, or beaver, that's all of them, basically if you transform into one of them, when you return back to normal, you'll be low on pretty much all your stats, basically almost half, to de half dead depending if you fought anything. Basically, what this allows you to do is spawn in with some hunger so you won't be completely starving when you turn back. Now the Beaver 1, 2, and 3, these ones aren't like the same ability that gets- well actually they kind of are, well just for this one. The Beaver 1 ability allows you to mine faster in your Beaver form. This one, Beaver 2, allows you to chop faster. And Rare Beaver 3 allows you to chop and mine and break hard materials in your Rare Beaver form. When it says hard materials, it means stuff like the Rip Stoles, I think, and also the Rare Pig Pillars that you use to start the um, Rare Pig fight. This path is locked because only one of the Rare forms can be mastered, which I chose the Moose one. But um, basically, if you didn't, if I didn't choose the Rare Moose mastery, I could have done Rare Beaver one. But anyways, basically only one of these can be unlocked, so just keep that in mind. The Werebeaver Mastery allows the Werebeaver to do a smack on the ground attack with his tail, destroying everything around him. It's kind of like Berger's um, stomping attack, basically. But here's the cool thing about it. When you use it on the boat, it's kind of like an oar, which it'll push you in the direction. To steer it, basically go on the side of the boat, the opposite side of the boat that you want to go to. I don't have a boat to explain it right now. But basically it works like an ore. Now, the Were Moose abilities, 1, 2, and 3. The Were Moose 1 allows you to get more resistance from hitting objects. When you're playing as the Were Moose, you have a dashing attack, 
However, if you run into stuff like trees, you'll turn back to your normal character faster. This just makes you more resistant, basically. The Wearmoose 2 allows you to slowly gain health while you're in your Wearmoose form. This one's actually really helpful. The Wearmoose 3 allows you to stop mid-charge in your Wearmoose form, meaning you'll no longer go like running into trees. You can basically stop easier. Now this is the one I did choose, so Wearmoose Mastery. The Wearmoose learns to throw a strong planar punch on every third hit and gains a natural defense against planar damage. So planar da um, this one's actually really good because planar damage is like super strong against the player. If y'all don't know what planar damage is, but in this game, basically planar damage, it's damage that penetrates your armor. So basically this is just, um, it's kind of hard to explain. Basically, enemies that can penetrate your armor can't really hurt the wear moose in with this ability. Plus, now your character has a combo. Originally, it was just throwing one, two punches, just like two in a row, basically. But now, one, two, and then the third one, he hits the enemies with, with his horns, dealing way more damage. Now, the Wear Goose 1, 2, and 3. Wear Goose 1 allows you to run faster when you're a Wear Goose. Wear Goose 2 becomes completely waterproof. Basically, if you get wet from rain, it won't do anything to you. And Wear Goose 3. Occasionally dodge an incoming attack in Wear Goose form. I'm not too sure what it means by that, but it might be like if an enemy hits you, you have a chance of not taking damage, so that's just what I think it is. And this last one, which is the most chaotic out of all the wear masteries, is the wear goose learns how to fly, and you may be thinking, oh this is cool, however, it's out of control. Meaning, let's say if I were the goose right now, I was just running around, basically, um, what would happen is, after running around for a little bit, your character would be teleported to a random part of your map. And it could be super random. It could be on the Moonquit Island, or Pearl's Island, or even the Lunar Island, or more of your mainland. Basically, you just fly out of control anywhere every, like, few, like, either a minute or a few seconds. But that's all for the, um, Curse tab. The next tab is Lumberjack, and then Affinity. I can just show all Affinity right now since it's pretty quick. Basically, Lunar Affinity, this one's probably really good, and Woody's lifelong goal. To control his wear power. Basically, the um, the moon will no longer turn Woody into his wear creatures. So basically, now you have full control and you don't have to worry about transforming randomly. The shadow one's a little different. It says that the queen will reward your loyalty by calling off her shadow creatures, but only when you're in wear form. It's kind of funny because they like put it in smaller text than the original one. But um, what makes this so good is that when you're trying to fight bosses, they make you drain sanity, and then the shadow creatures come and attack the player. Basically, if they won't attack you while you're in the wear form, you can just keep on hitting the boss without worrying about them. So basically that's pretty much it. Alright, now going into his lumberjack abilities. Quick picker 1, 2, and 3 allow him to collect items like grass and sticks way faster. Woodworker, the first one allows you to use Lucy, the axe, to craft stuff quicker. Something um, I think that's good to know is that um, Lucy, the axe, she has to be in your inventory in order to actually craft stuff. As you can see, um, if y'all can see, on the left where it says boards to craft them, normally it takes four logs, however with him it just takes three logs and having his axe in his inventory. It can't be like an item I'm holding, like if I equip the walking cane, now I can craft it. Which, as y'all can see, I just crafted some boards. Pretty simple. The next two abilities are really better, though. But you have to get this one in order to unlock them. But even yet, even though it is, even though it is kind of basic, it's still actually really effective. Alright, the next two abilities are almost broken by how powerful they are. Hat curving allows you to craft a hardwood hat, which is almost like a football helmet, except it has like 10% less defense, although it's not that noticeable. In order to craft it, you need six logs and a pine cone, plus having Lucy the Axe in your inventory. Which, this hat's really effective, and you can craft like a ton of these in a row if you get all the materials. The wooden walking stick is a little bit harder, but only like, like just a tiny bit harder. Because you need a, a piece of charcoal, three logs, and Lucy the Axe. It's basically the walking cane, but not as effective, like it's only slightly less effective. However, it is still really good and worthwhile to create. All right. Now Tree Guard Feller 1, 2, and 3. The first one allows you to do a little bit more damage to Tree Guards. The next one deals way more damage to Tree Guards. And the final one allows you to create a Tree Guard Totem, 
which when you set it down and light it on fire next to trees, it turns them automatically into tree girds. Like if I, if I placed one right here and lit it on fire, all these trees around me would literally, literally turn into them. Which if you're wondering what's so good about this, well one, you can defeat them to get living logs, but also if you surround like a boss fight, like a, one of the enemies with them, and just spawn in the tree guard, typically bosses can hit multiple enemies at the same time. So if you dodge the attack from the first boss and then it hits one of the tree guards, all the tree guards will be mad at the main boss that you're trying to defeat. And then all the tree guards will start fighting it. And because they have so much HP, they can typically melt down bosses really fast. All right, now I'm gonna tell you all about all the wear forms. First off, there's the goose one. This one allows you to, one, run faster, which as y'all can see, I'm a goose now. But also you can run on water just like that. If you transform back to Woody while you're on the water, it'll just sink through and then respawn somewhere on land, typically wherever you last were on land, so just keep that in mind. Other than that, and other than the skills I talked about earlier, there's nothing else about the goose. The only disadvantage about the goose is it can't attack creatures. Also every rare creature gets its own special dance, so as y'all can see, my weird goose is now dancing. You just use the dance emote. It doesn't have any other ones. If you stand still for a long time, the weird goose will transform back to normal. And just like that, I'm back. Alright, now for the beaver one. As y'all can see, I'm a beaver. I can one, as y'all can see, I can gnaw on things. In the pocket edition, you used to be able to eat logs off the ground to get your meter back up. However, it doesn't work like that in this one. The nice thing about the beaver is you can eat up those stumps as well. As y'all can see, I just gnawed up the tree and the stump. You can also break down rocks, destroy signs and stuff from your base, like almost like a hammer. But I mean, other than that, there's not really anything else about the were beaver. It, this one can attack, but the attack isn't too strong. Before the meteor runs out, let me show y'all the dance emote, just so y'all can see it. All right. If y'all may have noticed, the wear, me the wear meter replaces your hunger, so therefore, when, you when you're turning into a creature, it fills up your hunger for you, but leaves you almost starving when you finish. Now, I'm going to show y'all the moose one. I don't know if there are any nearby enemies, but um, there's a swamp down here where I can show y'all. Which, now y'all can see, I'm a moose. As y'all can see, I can hit enemies. One, two, and then punch. The third attack in the combo allows you to hit enemies and crush them. As y'all can see, I can hit multiple enemies at the same time. I can also ram, as y'all just saw right now. I'm able to run into stuff. Just like that. And then I can stop mid-charge. That's one of the abilities. One, two, three. As y'all can see, I just defeated that spider den really easy. Watch out for those tentacles. Let me show you all the dance emote really quick before I turn back. As y'all can see, this is what the dance emote looks like. Let me demonstrate the tree thing. As y'all can see, I just got hit. I just hit the tree, which just slows me down for a few seconds. With the resistance, normally without it, I would have been transformed back already. But because I have the resistance, it allows me to be perfectly fine. Alright, now I am back to normal. I don't think there's anything else to talk about. Let me just do a double check really quick. Alright, basically, for his abilities, well, things I like to use him for personally. One is for base building, because he can craft boards with these. It just makes it easier for him to build stuff like the alchemy engine and basically everything, including the wood flooring that I have here. Just overall, like I say, it's easier to build stuff when you're playing as him. Also, he's good for the events, mainly the year of the, um, well, I guess all the year of the animal events, because, um, once again, the board of crafting really comes in handy, being able to build things way faster, because tree cutting is always my, like, my least favorite thing to do in this game, however, now it's a quicker process. Something else I forgot to mention that I pretty much use him for is using the goose to travel around the entire map. Well, I think a lot of players could agree that's probably one of the best uses for it, because of how fast the goose can go. Also, this thing I forgot to mention is that all the were creatures can actually see in the dark, so you don't have to worry about having a campfire or anything like that next to you. 
All right, now that's pretty much everything about Woody. I'm gonna go switch out to the next character. I was doing a character reset right now, just reminded me to mention this. A disadvantage about Woody and his axe, Lucy, well mainly his axe, is that Lucy the axe actually does less damage than a normal one. A normal axe does like 27 damage, she only does 13. So typically on worlds when I start, I'll typically craft a secondary axe I like to nickname the Battle Axe, because typically I like I like to use that as like an early game weapon if I have to. Alright, now Wes. First off, he can't talk, so instead he'll just kinda do it. he'll like, one of his things he'll do is ride an invisible bicycle, another time he'll like wave high, basically he just does all these different actions, although you can't see it right now because I have the spawn invincibility power up in a way. I'm not sure if it's considered a power-up, but that's just what I'm calling it. Basically, Wes can't talk, which I should get this out of the way now, is the fact that he can't talk to plants, so he needs to use stuff like shell bells or the pan flute or one-man band in order to get the plants to grow easier. So just keep that in mind. Now for survivor items. He has a pretty nice mix of them. They're not too, too helpful, but you know. The first one is the pile of balloons. You need to um, this is the one you start with, however, if you don't have it, you can't craft any of your special items. So that's why they give you one. At least the company was nice enough to give Wes a pile of balloons when he starts. Imagine having to kill, like, a bunch of mosquitoes, get ice, which is pretty much only available during winter, just to then craft your special survivor crafts. Anyways. First off, you can craft a balloon, which these take the pile of balloons in your inventory, Oh wow, I, I just noticed something. Basically, one, there's a balloon that you can craft, which it takes five sanity. However, the cat, I just realized, when I placed it down, tried to pop it. Wow, the kit guns actually pop the balloons. I didn't know that. If the balloons pop on enemies, it makes them take damage. This is probably his best craft. It's the speedy balloon. It lasts a little while, but makes you a lot faster than before. Here's what normal speed looks like, and then his speedy balloon. I don't know if you can tell much of a difference, but if there is a difference, it's just hard to tell. Also, a secret feature that you don't get told about is that this one, if it gets low enough on durability, it'll float up, and it'll kind of look like a flare, actually. Yeah, see, it's floating away. If I run over here, one, you could see the balloon, but also you can see the balloon on the map. You could pretty much see it from everywhere. Well, actually, I don't know if y'all could see it with my camera, but um, basically it works like a flare. However, it doesn't create the explosion, so just keep that in mind. The next one's the party balloon, which I'll let the kit can do the honors. <laughs> I'll hit it myself. Basically, you hit it, and there's a bunch of smaller balloons and confetti. It just is a nice little detail in case you wanted to build one of these. It doesn't really do anything, but you know. The inflatable vest is a wearable item, which I'm pretty sure works kind of like a life jacket or something. I'm not too sure how a life jacket works in this game, but um, I kind of do, kind of don't. It might be like the shipwrecked one, where it helps you get back to land, but even yet you can already do it automatically. So just to be honest, I'm actually not too sure what the inflatable vest does. The balloon hat actually gives you a little bit of um, wetness protection, but that's pretty much it. Basically just like a few little things that you can use for different protection. Alright, that was everything good about the character. Now I'm going to talk about his many, many disadvantages. First off, I mentioned he had low of pretty much every stat. That's just something I'm going to talk about and get out of the way. He also, if he's using, if he's trying to break trees, normally a character takes like, let's say for a max level tree, it takes like 15 hits with um, an axe to destroy it. For Wes, it takes 25. That's what I meant by not a good hard worker because he's a lot slower to destroy things, including rocks. He also does 25% less damage than normal characters, and unlike Wendy, he doesn't have a twin sister ghost that can attack things and make you do increased damage. He just, in general, does less damage. Also, a little bit of a secretive ability, or disadvantage I should say, is that Wes is more likely to get struck by lightning than other characters. He has like an increased chance or something, so that's another thing to watch out for. And the low sanity during rain really doesn't make it any easier, because you'll be fighting off more shadow enemies. And then the other thing I mentioned was the creeps, how the other character 
is the only one who can actually craft them instead of Wes. So once again, how unfortunate for Wes not being able to create his own food instead of needing another character to do it for him. Which is especially unfortunate for players like me who typically typically just play on single player. I mean it is called Don't Starve Together, but I just like to play it on single player. I have the sound turned off, however y'all aren't missing out, because Wes doesn't actually have a like any sound effect instrument. Like pretty much every character has an instrument that plays for their voice, however Wes doesn't. Also, right now, he does not have a skill tree, so instead, I'll be talking about my ideas for a skill tree. Alright, basically, for a skill tree, I feel like, well, a lot of players talk about him having, like, more disadvantages. Like, just giving him more disadvantages for a skill tree. But in my opinion, I feel like then what's even the point of doing it? I mean, why am I going to waste time getting skill points just to make the game harder on myself? So that's what a lot of players have talked about for his skill tree. However, I have some better ideas for it. Well, better in my opinion anyway. Basically, my idea for a skill tree would be maybe, one, giving him like a little bit of more health, hunger, and sanity. I mean, just so he's not too, too low. I mean, the company can do whatever they want, but I feel like maybe Wes could at least maybe get some small perks. Also, maybe another one is, each balloon takes five sanity to create, plus the balloon pile of balloons, you know, in my inventory. It'd be cool if maybe just maybe it takes slightly less sanity, or maybe even if there are more balloon crafts, which I actually have an idea for a super big one, which I'll tell y'all in a minute. Another idea for a skill tree, well, for another skill that could be on a skill tree, is balloons do more damage to enemies. They only do a little bit of damage, like barely noticeable when you pop them on enemies, however it makes for a good distraction. Maybe it could do more damage, but that's just an idea. Now time for my mega idea. If y'all remember in Wes's animated short, not the one about his origin, but the one that shows him in the constant, creating a balloon mech. That's right, a balloon mech suit. Basically, my idea is a balloon mech suit that Wes can drive around. It'd be kind of like the hat and vest where it takes one hit to destroy. However, it'd be like something cool just to have. Of course, it wouldn't do more damage, much damage, However, I feel like it would be like kind of a neat feature to have. Now, here's my next idea, which is actually good. Let's say you get like one that's like a balloon, a balloon mincy one, where you get like pretty much this skill, in my opinion, would be after the first balloon mech. I'm thinking about the idea of a second mech that's actually made out of actual materials. Maybe it could have some ridiculous price or something like maybe like 30 logs, like 20 stone. Something big like that, maybe just that way it's not too, too powerful. But basically an actual mech that Wes can drive around and attack enemies with, with actually good damages. Now this could be too powerful for Wes, but I feel like that'd like give him somewhat of a reason for people to play as him. Basically an actual mech suit and the balloon one, almost like a prototype. For the Lunar Affinity, if they were to go with my balloon mech idea, however this is just a theory anyways. If they were to go with my Balloon Mech idea, I'd say the Lunar Affinity and Shadow one would be a Lunar and Shadow Mech, which do more damage to the respective enemies. Now if I'm talking about uses that I do for this character, like the reason I play as him, to be fair I don't really play as him often, however you could use him to drop in, explore the map, then maybe get the Lunar Island key and then drop out. If you do some, if you get the cartography table and create a map as him and then give it, then you know, drop out and then drop in again if you're using the die to reset method. You can then basically explore the map with the speedy balloon and then switch to another character. However, you could pretty much easily do this with the Woody. I mean, there's not too much to talk about. I mean, that's not too much of a reason to play as him unless you want really a challenge. But pretty much that's it. I mean, West mostly has downsides, does less damage, does like, requires more swings with an axe to cut down trees, break rocks, stuff like that. His main upsides is that he can, of course, craft balloons, and, yeah, I mean, there's pretty much not much else to talk about. Well, I hope you all enjoyed this video, so please like and subscribe if you enjoyed. Goodbye.